G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be formally proving the projectile motion formulas. So we'll begin by supposing that we have a person just here, and this person is about to throw a ball into the air. This is where the ball is. Now all we need is the initial velocities and the initial positions in order to predict with absolute precision where this ball will be and what speeds the velocity the ball will be traveling with at any time during its flight. So let's go through it step by step. Let's define where the ball is at a time t equals zero. We'll define it by saying it's at a position x naught in the horizontal and at a position y naught in the vertical. We'll also say that at t is equal to zero, so that's when the ball is just starting its flight, it's got a velocity v naught at some angle. Now this implies that it's also got a vertical component of velocity, which I will call v y naught and a horizontal component of velocity, which I will call vx0. Now we can get started in the mathematics. We know that the acceleration of this ball at any point during its flight, ay in the vertical direction, is equal to minus g. I won't dwell too much into this, but all this says is there's a constant force due to gravity which is acting constantly downwards, right? And, and, and as a result, the acceleration will be g constantly downwards. That's why ay is equal to minus g. Now we can analyze this further by realizing that the definition of acceleration is a is equal to dv dt. And then we can just integrate to find our velocity. We know that vy now must be equal to the integral of minus g dt. This is a pretty simple integral because g is considered constant, so this is going to be minus gt plus some integrational constant. Now, how do we find the integrational constant? Well, we need to use initial conditions. We know that vy, that's our velocity of our ball in the y direction, is equal to vy naught, that's our initial vertical velocity, when, when t is equal to zero, right? This is our initial condition. So we can plug this into the equation above to solve for c1. We know that vy naught must be equal to minus g times by zero plus c1, and then because this turns to zero, c1 then must in fact be equal to vy naught. Now I'll write the full equation above here. So this implies then, once we substitute c1 into this equation, that vy is equal to minus gt plus vy naught. So far so good. We've already got our equation describing the velocity of our ball at any time t in the y direction. But we can do better than that. We also know that we can describe the position of our ball by using calculus once more, because we know that we know that vy is going to be equal to dy dt. So we integrate to solve for y now, and we're left with y must be the integral of minus gt plus vy naught dt. Now this is a fairly simple integral as well because g is constant, vy naught is constant, so this just turns into minus a half gt squared plus vy naught t plus another integrational constant c2. Now how do we solve this integrational constant? You've guessed it, initial conditions. So we need to realize that y is equal to y naught, right, when t is equal to zero. Substitute this into here to solve for c2 and we're left with y naught is equal to minus a half g times 0 squared plus vy naught times 0 plus c2. These turn to 0, so c2 is going to be equal to y naught. Substitute this back into this equation, and we're left with y is going to be equal to minus a half g t squared plus vy naught t plus y naught. This is our equation describing our vertical position of our ball at any time t. Now you might be thinking, well, so far we found the velocities and the positions in the y direction, what about the x direction? Well, it's a very similar process. We just have a slightly different starting point. We know that ax is gonna be equal to zero. Now we know this is the case because we're making certain assumptions. We're going to assume that there's no aerodynamic drag which could produce a force in the x direction, which would in turn produce an acceleration. So we're assuming none of that. We're basically assuming that the only force on this thing during its flight is its force due to gravity, which is downwards, so ax is just equal to zero. Okay, so as a result, we can evaluate this and find vx 
And, and we can do that by using this formula again. We know that Vx is just the integral of this, which is the integral of 0 dt. And then the integral of 0 is just a constant, which I will call c3. And then we can find the integrational constant by using initial conditions again. We know, and you're probably getting good at this, we know that Vx is equal to Vx naught, that's the initial um, velocity in the x direction, when t is equal to 0. And this is a pretty easy substitution because there's not even a t to substitute. So it just means that, I'll draw it up over here, it just means that um, Vx naught is equal to C3. And when you substitute that in, you're left with Vx is equal to Vx naught. Which, by the way, does make some intuitive sense. I mean, if your acceleration is zero, your velocity will remain constant. Okay, so, so far so good. Let's find the position now. We know that Vx is going to be equal to dx dt, right? And so that means we can integrate the expression above to get x. So we know that x is going to be equal to the integral of Vx naught dt. And when we integrate this, we're going to be left with Vx naught t plus another integrational constant, which I will call c4. Now we know that we can solve this using in initial conditions again. So let's go through the process. We know that x is going to be equal to x naught when t is equal to 0. Substitute it, play the game. We know that x naught is going to be equal to x naught is going to be equal to uh, vx naught times 0 plus c4. This will turn to 0. c4 is in fact just x naught. And presto, you're left with your final result that x is going to be equal to vx naught t plus x naught. And we're done. And we are done. We have our equations describing our positions and our velocities at any time t in the x and y directions. That's all we need to predict its motion. Now I just want to end um, on a small little side note. First of all, this assumes a few things. It assumes no aerodynamic drag and it assumes that the force due to gravity is constant. But another thing I want to mention is that if you were to play around with these two expressions just here and substitute out t using simultaneous equations, you could prove you could prove that the path of the projectile would in fact be a parabola, okay? I'll leave that as a separate exercise for you, but I hope that made sense, guys. Cheers.